What's up, everybody, and welcome to Pizza and Pixels, a show where GP and I order a pizza and talk about video games until that pizza shows up. It goes live every Saturday at youtube.com slash xphenom or on podcast services around the globe, places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, really any podcast service of your choosing. I'm one of your hosts, Josh, a.k.a. Hexphenom, a.k.a. the Sony Jabroni, and I'm joined by my co-host, the abstract rocker, GP. JP, how you doing, man? Oh, it's going pretty good, man. Just uh, on vacation, feeling pretty good. Staying away from work. <laughs> That's yeah. always good. Um, other than that, we're ready to talk some games and some news and some good old shebang. Some good old shebang. Some good old shebang. <laughs> what, 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 what we got today? What we got today? Well, coming up on today's episode of Pizza and Pixels, two big news stories we're going to talk about are, of course, Halo Infinite has been delayed to 2021, and... Fortnite, or Epic Games, rather, is suing both Apple and Google, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But before we uh, get off the starting line here, I just want to remind everybody that all summer long, we are raising money for Extra Life, which is a charity that raises money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, and we're raising money this summer for our local hospital, which is Penn State Children's Hospital in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And of course, because of the pandemic, now more than ever, they could really use our help. Uh, you know, because, you know, on top of the equipment they normally need to buy, now they also need to buy, you know, masks, nebulizers, things like that. Um, and it's also a very important cause to me because my father passed away from cancer almost 17 years ago to the day. So if you guys can't afford to, please, please consider following the links down in the description. Uh, the first one on the top is going to be your direct donation link that'll take you right to the Extra Life website, right to our fundraising page where you can donate directly. And then we're also selling T-shirts where all proceeds will go towards our goal of raising $1,000 for the kids. They're available in a bunch of different sizes, cuts, colors, styles. They're in tank tops to keep you cool all summer long. And they're even in kid sizes so you can outfit the whole family and know that you're helping the kids along the way. So you can definitely go ahead and consider buying one, of course. Uh, oh, and of course, remember, if we raise $500 which we're at, I believe, $200 right now. If we raise $500 for the kids, I'll be cutting my hair live on stream. And at this point, I have a good feeling that we're going to hit that during the Extra Life stream, so we're gonna have to, <laughs> so I'll have to cut my hair in front of all you guys, which will be fun. Uh, I'd that one out, probably with my donation, maybe in my... Wait, what are we at right now for the donations? I think we're at $200. Dang, we need to make it... <laughs> guys, someone, someone donate $1,000 and we'll be <laughs> And then, of course, if we raise $1,000, uh, I will be dyeing my hair green. So, And, of course, Tyler and I came up with a new milestone for $1,500 if we're able to reach it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to announce that just yet. I think we'll announce it on the Extra Life stream. But, hell yeah! Like I said, if you needed any incentives to, to help out the kids, there you go. But, with that being said, uh, we're also streaming mostly every day here on the channel to help raise money leading up to the extra life stream which happens on august 29th for 24 hours so definitely be sure to tune into those and help us out share the links and and, and whatnot but yeah go and share it share that shit up we're gonna start off with a couple of smaller news stories where we get into the two the two big ones Let's start off with, uh, this isn't really like an article or anything. I just thought it was weird that you were saying before the, before the episode started that, uh, apparently the, the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 remake warehouse demo is locked exclusively the, to the digital edition of the game, which I think is dumb. I'm right. It's so stupid because, I mean, okay, I can see the physical, the digital thing. All right. I, I can understand that. It's just... It's so stupid knowing that I got the I got the limited edition exclusive content, the board. Like I have a birdhouse deck coming my way for like a twenty dollars saving, which is great. Um, and yeah, I can't I can't play the demo, which is pretty stupid. Seeing so, you now I have the limited edition of the yeah, game. Like, like you literally got the most expensive edition of the game, and you're locked out of the demo. <laughs> At the yeah. very least, they could have easily just been like. I mean, like emailed you or you know if I anyone mean, was really desperate enough like they could just call GameStop and be like hey I pre-ordered this edition of the game like here's my you know 
power up awards thing for proof and they could just maybe yeah, like give you a code cool. or something or email you something like it i don't know it's it's, it's pretty dumb yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go down my emails real quick while we're talking. I'm, I'm I don't think I don't think I have an email from GameStop. I'm just seeing. I, I my friends are really really fucking devastated. Uh, these are the people that haven't played a Tony Hawk game probably since Tony Hawk Underground Two. We're talking 2004. That was 16 years ago. So, nah, nah. Oh wait, 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 wait. No. I have, I wonder if it's in here. I have the pre-order of what I got. No, it would have been sent out uh, recently. It would have been sent out. Yeah, I, I didn't get it. Yeah, I have it saved in case something happens. Yeah. Just because you never know what the fucking internet anymore. So, um, with, uh, with that edition, did you get it, like, do you have to, is it, I don't understand why I'm having such trouble trying to formulate the sentence. Is it getting, del like, delivered to your house, or do you have to go to GameStop to get it? Like, is it just... It's, uh, it'll be delivered to my house on the 4th. Oh, right. I mean, I'm, like, realistically, like, I could just watch the demo. Because the thing is, this game is... It's mainly everything Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD wanted to be. Because you could tell they literally took the moves, the animations, and the physics from HD and built the game around the original feel of it well, i don't know if i'd say so, the physics because i, I didn't well they have the same well i mean the the moves yeah, and everything makes sense but like yeah in terms of like they're the actual better. way that the physics feels i would i mean obviously i haven't played pro skater one plus two but from just the impressions that i've seen people have said that hd didn't feel right and this yeah. feels right so there's definitely something that they changed along the way between HD and um, this game, which I think is probably one of the like that they how they were touting that they built it off of NeverSoft's original um, yeah, like they, coding uh, for controls and stuff. Yeah, they basically like because HD was kind of like that. It's as HD didn't have the feel, so that's probably why they took the ground of HD and made it what you see in one and two. Yeah. It's way more refined, especially the level design and like the balance meters and all. And you got everything in. You got spine transfers if you want. Um, I could definitely tell you that they're going to be doing the rest of them because in the hangar, on the walls around the whole hangar, you see all the game banners. Yeah. Well, they, so you could tell that they're they're going to be doing. I didn't see America Wasteland though, so I don't. I, don't I wonder really how they would do like. Do you think they would bundle three and four together? Because three and four are yeah. very different the way they play, though. Because isn't four like more yeah. open world and like closer to um, the underground um, style almost? It's more open world. Uh, they're probably gonna do three and four and Thug one and two, and then maybe American Wasteland thrown in there, maybe. Because I'm so American... nostalgic for American Wasteland. <laughs> I'm assuming American Wasteland will be a standalone, just because they could probably add so much more shit to the game. I'm assuming because that game is pretty big. Uh, didn't really feel the vibes I have underground. It was still a great game. Uh, that's really where it started dipping for me, but great game. Great soundtrack. Punk rock being introduced fully into the universe. That was cool. Um, yeah, they're definitely going to do three and four together. Probably Thug 1 and 2. Uh, and then probably American Wasteland and maybe Project 8 or maybe another game thrown in somewhere. Maybe. Um, How long do you think we would need to wait to see like a new... like? unique Tony Hawk game that's not a remake probably uh, um, do you think that would be like, like maybe done interstitially between the remakes or do you think we'd have to wait a while to see like a brand new Tony Hawk game I think it'd probably be done in between the remakes they, they would probably at least try one I mean 3 and 4 is going to come out next fall apparently I'm sure so maybe they could cop one out maybe next spring or just, I don't know, maybe they can combine a deal where you get all three games for the price of one. Maybe that could be it. Uh, I think they got to definitely do something, though, because they really fucked up with HD and 5. I mean, I like yeah. 5, but it's just they threw it out the door way too soon. I mean, that's not Robomoto's fault. That's Activision, but... Yeah, I mean, that game was built on the premise of, oh, shit, we're about to lose the rights to Tony Hawk. Let's, let's shit one out real quick. <laughs> Let's just shit one out real quick. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna go pop a squat. 
But as a Tony Hawk fan, what do you think a brand new Tony Hawk would look like? Do you think it would try to be another pro skater? Do you think it would go more like the underground American Wasteland direction? Do you think they would do something completely new? I think... I think personally they should just do Underground 3. I, I really think that Underground 3 would be the right direction because where the fuck do you go? I mean, if you're going to be... I, if you're going to be remastering the classics and you're going to get one and two, maybe Underground 3 might come out when those two are on board, which would be ideally 2022. Uh, so maybe if they do Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4, maybe they could put in a new Pro Skater game. And then the next year they do Underground, they put a new Underground game. And then they do American Wasteland, and then they do another modern day game. Because then you can bundle them together for a higher price. Yeah. I mean... Activision's sitting on a fuck ton of money. Um, the remaster is going to sell hot. I mean, Vicarious Vision seems to be the savior of remakes. Yeah. So why not just have them fucking do it all? <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> I'm sure they enjoy it. I can't see why not going into remaking these games from scratch. Yeah. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot in store. I, I think maybe with three and four, when they remaster those, you might see maybe like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, or whatever. I don't think it's gonna be called Pro Skater Six. I think it'll probably um, either be Pro Skater like colon something, or maybe they would just do like yeah. a a spiritual reboot where they just call it Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah, you know, or they might call maybe Tony Hawk Pro Skater XL. Uh, you know, just something. <laughs> Tony uh, something Hawk Pro not... Skater Triple X. <laughs> <laughs> Pro Skater Triple X, come and get them on the big and tall section. <laughs> Gotta pay five extra dollars, but you get them, boy. Free DLC of 3XL Gildan t shirts. Ah! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. But that'd be funny. Tony Out Pro Skater XL. I feel like they're probably gonna call Tony Out Pro Skater like something something very hip and cool. <laughs> Tony Hawk Pro Skater Yeet. There you Tony go. Hawk Pro Skater Yeet. Put it on the box, ship it out. That's at least that's at least a hundred million copies sold right there. <laughs> I know, right? Yeet, yeet it out the door. You could yeet it on the street. Yeet it in the burp. You could yeet it. It's you like, could yeet it at Tony Hawk's mansion. It's like Whoa. it's like that uh that Modern Warfare Two commercial that ended up getting banned, where it's that old guy sitting in the chair and he's like, everybody's doing it. Boys are doing it with other boys. Girls are doing it with girls. Girls. Everybody doesn't know what's going on anymore, but one thing's for sure. We know how to skate. <laughs> yeet. It'd be funny if he goes, yeah, but we, we know one thing, and that's how the yeet. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I, I think next year is... Um, I, I really think next year is going to be some kind of reimagined Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Probably with... I'd totally be down for that. I could see it. Uh, I think they're... You could tell they're in it for the long haul. You could tell they're in it for the money. You could tell they're in for it. So, will they make the game I mean, we'll have to see how this game sells. I I imagine it's selling pretty well, though. I think it's going to sell... There's no microtransaction or DLC announced right now, but you already know probably within the first two weeks they're probably going to think about it because you already know this game's getting night on fire. Yeah. Um, who the hell doesn't want to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater in a world where I don't know everything is just too fucking real right now? It's like you kind of have to escape a bit. So I I think it'd be I think it'd be a good feel. Please take some money. All right. So this next one is from IGN. We got Miles Morales. We get a full arc in Spider-Man PS5 game. This one is by Joe Scrubbles, of course, at IGN. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5 will will complete the coming-of-age arc for the fledgling hero that began in Marvel Spider-Man on PS4. Slight spoilers for Marvel Spider-Man on PS4 follows. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man introduces Miles Morales as an occasionally playable side character who's taken under Peter Parker's wing. The core game ends with Morales being bitten by a new radioactive spider, while DLC packs feature him taking his first steps as a superhero. Speaking to Entertainment Weekly, game director Brian Horton explained that the upcoming spinoff game is designed to finish the story that the first game started. This is a full arc for Miles Morales that started in Spider-Man on PS4. We really are completing this hero's coming of age in our game. It is a complete story. Insomniac had already hinted at a fully-fledged Spider-Man 2 and said, We still have much of Peter Parker's story left to tell. 
but it feels as though Miles will be trained as a superhero in his own right by the end of his starring role. Entertainment Weekly also posted a brand new PS5 screenshot from the game, which I'll put it on screen now. Dude, it looks so good, and if, if that's what the photo mode looks like in this game, dude, I'm not going to have any hard drive space. My Here's solid state drive is going to be just Spider-Man Miles Morales and, like, a couple thousand screenshots. <laughs> right? There's thousand screens. There's just I think, uh, beautiful ray tracing, and like you can see the reflections like bouncing off of Miles's lenses and the puddles and stuff, and the building in the background. It's so beautiful. I think. Um, see, I'm, I'm not gonna begin Miles Morales just because I'm waiting for the actual sequel, but uh, maybe what we could do when that comes. Well, that's a launch title, right? Yeah. Launch title. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe when that comes out, maybe we could like share play it, or just do something like that. Maybe. I'm down. Just to get some kind of thing going on. I'd, I'd like to experience it. I'm sure it's going to be good. It's just like, I really enjoyed the last full-on Spider-Man game. So uh, I think I think Miles Morales will be a, a pretty good game. It's just, I'm waiting for the second installment, like the big sequel. I'm interested to see, like, yeah. all, the, all the new animations they have for Miles, because Miles, I mean, especially the fact that he's just becoming Spider-Man, and the Spider-Man that we played as in the PS4 game had been Spider-Man for eight years. So a lot of, you know, Peter's movement is a lot more like flowy and you can kind of tell that it just is second nature to him at this point. So I'm kind of interested to see like a lot of Miles stories is like when he first becomes Spider-Man, he's like swinging and like flailing around. Like he kind of doesn't really know how to control his body yet. So I'm interested to see like what kind of animations come out of that and stuff. It should be very interesting to see what happens. Peter Parker. Peter Parker, are you gonna D? I wonder. So does that mean does that mean Spider Man Two is coming out in twenty twenty one then? I don't know. I I'm assuming that it's. I mean, it's definitely in the works. I don't know how far along it is. I I would say that this is probably supposed to hold you over. So this I would say maybe like twenty twenty two. For Spider-Man, maybe like spring 2023. I, I don't really know. I mean, yeah. if they really <laughs> wanted to, like they probably could get it out next year, but maybe well, maybe they'll do spring 2022. It's not really that long of a wait from fall. What it usually comes out in fall. Well, the last one did. Well, right? yeah, Spider-Man. Spider-Man One came out September 7th, 2018, I think. And then yeah, Miles so. Morales is coming out. I mean, they haven't necessarily announced that it's a launch title, but it's holiday 2020, so most likely it'll be there on day one of the PS5. So, like, mid-November. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, they could definitely, like... Sony has proven this generation that they can sell a big first-party title any time of the year. Because they have, like, a pretty much a constant lineup of, like, big holiday release, big spring release, big summer release. So, I mean... Yeah, I know, right? They can really so. slot Spider-Man in whenever. But um, I know that the game director for this game is different than the game director from Spider-Man on PS4. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's two separate teams working on these Spider-Man games, but that could very well be the case. Um, so I don't know. We'll have to see. I think realistically, though, like... I'd say probably the the safest bet is, like, somewhere between... Spring 2022 and spring 2023, I would think. Even though, like... I'll be ready. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll be freaking ready, dude. But... I don't know, because, like, on one hand, I, I want to say that, like, they already have a bunch of stuff in place to build off of from the PS4 version, but also they might want to, you know, take a little bit longer and really push the, the PS5 really hardware and maybe even make some new environments. Like, I would expect them to probably add in like more boroughs of New York like Queens and, and Brooklyn and stuff I think it's gonna be cool if they add in the second like the islands on the side so you have Long and Staten practically right like that uh, that'd be kind of cool if they did it I mean I know Spider-Man you couldn't go what like well, I know there was a glitch where you can literally go across the boundary <laughs> yeah you used to be able to like roll on the water and stuff you roll on rolling on the revo yeah <laughs> pretty so much basically yeah bringing that a uh, ccr vibe here yeah that that was the glitch. it was fun um i attempted to get to the statue of liberty and then i found out it was just a stupid yeah it's just a flat texture 
So I was very, I was very upset. That's one thing that's like, I I wish you could get to the Statue of Liberty and stuff like that. Because I remember even in the Spider-Man 2 game, you could get there. I feel like they might do that. Yeah, because in the other ones, they had it, right? Spider-Man 2 had it, right? I think. I wouldn't say, I don't think every Spider-Man game had it, but I know for a fact 2 did. But the only way that you could actually get there, because there's obviously nothing to swing on on the way there, is you'd have to attach yourself to a helicopter and just wait for a helicopter to fly over to um, to the island. But, I mean... I made it! Sir, how are you going to get out of here? I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, uh, I'm pretty sure if you jumped in the water, it just teleported you back to Manhattan. Oh, but... oh perfect. At least they had it in the game. I think that'd be cool to do something. And I imagine if they had that in the new one where you could just go onto a helicopter. I think that'd be funny if they just did that. Just yeah. for nostalgia. I'm sure you could probably get in. Yeah. That'd be something. But uh, just to finish off this article, it basically goes on to say, uh, elsewhere in the interview, Insomniac reiterates that Miles Morales' game isn't a formal sequel to the first game and that it's a shorter spinoff likened in scope to the, to the Lost Legacy game in the Uncharted series. Uh, Horton adds that the decision to have the character star in a shorter game was a way of telling his story in an impactful way. When we started crafting it, we realized with a little bit more of a compact storytelling style, we could tell a very emotional and impactful story that would fit really well as an experience that would take Spider-Man 1 and Miles Morales and do justice to his character. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is due to arrive in holiday 2020 for PS5. So far, we know a few plot details. We've seen the game's box art and learned that the game will feature an optional 4K 60 frames per second mode We've also speculated about six comic stories that could inspire his next journey. Oh, hey, speaking of that, with uh, with Tony Hawk, it is 4K 60 frames per second native. I don't know if... Uh, I think it's probably for the PS4 installment, but definitely PS5 will have the enhancements, so that's going to be really fucking cool. I might actually port my shit over, to be honest with you. I, I feel like, obviously not to, you know... But the, the, the scope of Tony Hawk does lend itself pretty well to being able to do, like, higher resolutions and frame rates, because it is very small levels. And it's mainly in a box. Yeah. It's in a box. That's that's the uh, the secret to Tony Hawk, is it's in a box. So usually all games somehow are designed in a box. Like zombie maps, whatever, but... Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty freaking stoked. I think Miles Morales is going to be a great game. I mean, who knows? Maybe I might end up picking it up if I get a deal. I just, I don't know. Like, I'm not the comic book guy. I kind of wonder if it's going to be full price, though. Because if, if they keep saying, oh, it's like Uncharted Lost Legacy, it's like Uncharted Lost Legacy. Well, Lost Legacy came out at 40 bucks, So we'll see how the, how the price discrepancy weighs out. Either way, you guys already yeah. know, I'm a Spider-Man fanboy. I can't show it to you, but I have the Spider-Man PS4 console sitting right next to me. I got, like, five Spider-Man pops over there. I'm all in. I'm getting Miles Morales day one. I don't really care what it costs, but if they keep comparing it to Uncharted Lost Legacy, which came out at forty dollars, I would expect this to be cheaper than a full price game. But we'll see. Just charge my card. It's like it's like yeah, Spider Man Miles Morales is a hundred dollar game. It's just like all right, well, I'll still buy it. I'll still buy it. So fuck it. Let's do it. All right. So now getting into one of the big news stories. Halo Infinite delayed to 2021. No release date was given. God, that's going to piss a lot of fucking people off. <laughs> Holy shit. This one's by Nicole Carpenter over at Polygon. Uh, Halo Infinite has been delayed until 2021. Developer 343 Industries announced Tuesday. Studio head Chris Lee made the announcement published on social media and the Halo Infinite blog. Lee said the decision to hold the game until 2021 was made due to multiple factors, including, quote, the ongoing COVID-related impacts. End quote. He noted that it's not sustainable for the team to rush it out for this holiday when Microsoft's Xbox Series X is slated for its launch. The full statement is as follows. Today, I want to share an important Halo Infinite development update with the community. We have made the difficult decision to shift our release to 2021 to ensure the team has adequate time to deliver a Halo experience that meets our vision. The decision to shift our release is the result of multiple factors that have contributed to developmental challenges, including the ongoing COVID-related impacts affecting us all this year. I want to acknowledge the hard work from our team at 343 Industries. We have remained committed to making a great game and finding solutions to development challenges. However, it's not sustainable for the well-being of our team or the overall success of the game to ship it this holiday. We know this will be disappointing to many of you, and we all share in that sen sentiment. 
The passion and the support of the community has shown over the years has been incredible and inspiring. We wanted nothing more than to play our game with the community this holiday, but the extra time will let us finish the critical work necessary to deliver the most ambitious Halo game at the quality we know our fans expect. Thank you for your support and understanding. Damn. Uh, that, that's uh, that, that's pretty rough that if you're if you're a Halo guy waiting for that game. I mean, even if like if you're an Xbox fan in general, like their their big launch game that they've literally been touting as the launch game for. They've literally been touting it as the launch game for the next gen console before they even had a name for the next gen console. Yeah. Like Halo yeah, Infinite, I think, debuted like, at E3 2018, and they were like, this is the next generation of Halo. This is the next generation of Xbox. Halo's leading the charge. And then. They're really digging goddamn deep. Halo's leading the charge. All the way from 2002. They're leading the charge. Yeah, and now it's. Now it's pushed. <laughs> And now it's pushed. You know, I, I, let me just... While we're on here, I just... I gotta go on the Halo page. I am just curious about what the hell these comments are gonna be all about. <laughs> this is gonna be something. So get your popcorn. And like, gonna be... obviously, my stance on it is... That... Sure, like, they built it up as this big launch title, and it's definitely gonna suck for the Xbox Series X as a whole. But I think as a Halo game, like, I don't see it as a bad thing for it to be delayed. Like, I would rather, especially for how shit the last couple Halo games have been, obviously I don't know that from experience, but just from talking with Halo fans, I know that a lot of people didn't like the most recent Halo games, and so for them to delay this one and get it right when it releases, I think is way more important than meeting the launch of the Series X. Because if this game were to launch broken and shit like i think i think the halo franchise would just be done because halo 4 people it. didn't love five people hated and now it seems like it was just halo's just literally honestly halo is at the point where it has gone on so long that they lost the plot it's gone well, they lost the plot mostly because bungie left because bungie left lost the plot and uh I gotta admit, a lot of these people are actually very sympathetic towards this. I'm very, very amazed. Um, then there's the classic GIF. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? <laughs> I mean, it's true, though. Like, they're pushing yeah, really their big launch true. title out of the launch window just to make sure that it doesn't release broken and shitty. And I think it's more of a factor of they kind of realize what's riding on this particular installment of Halo. Because they're building it up as, like, this big spiritual reboot for the franchise and bringing it back to the classic Halo feel and all this stuff. And you can't spout that and then also just shit the game out when it's not ready yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I mean, you just, Bill Gates, you guys going to shit this game out or what? <laughs> just sitting there in the studio just straining themselves, you know? But... It seems like they're sympathetic because they're like, hey, I think that's a pretty awesome decision because I don't want a half-baked game like the last game you guys put out because it yeah. was pretty fucking shitty. But it's like they shit on them, but they didn't. A mutual respect kind of thing. It, 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 uh, I feel like it's, it's more of like a props to you guys for... At least they did it. It's for balls. So yeah, balls. for having the balls to do it and knowing that, well eventually get a better halo game out of it like no matter what happens halo infinite when it does come out is going to be in a significantly better place than it would have been in if it came out this holiday and yeah. so like for instance one of the things was they had announced when they first showed off halo infinite at that xbox showcase a couple weeks ago they had announced that um ray tracing wouldn't be in the game at launch it would come in an update later so I wonder if now the, the ray trace lighting will be baked in and not have to come through an update later. But like that's it's just right. in it. That's it's just like one small thing, but it's like also there's definitely polish that needs to be done. I know a lot of people shit on the, the graphics of the Halo demo. I don't really know how much they can do to really improve the graphics. I mean definitely lighting, like the ray trace lighting will definitely help a lot, but I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But I I mean like I said, the, big props to them. I mean, it took balls. Um, I'm sure Microsoft is disappointed. 
because I think they were really banking on that game to come out. Uh, but at least it's going to actually be done, well done. Um, it's going to be fully baked, not half baked. Um, I was thinking about how we normally pronounce things a bit. Halu Infanit. Halu Anfunat. But uh, I know there's another article in here that we'll get to. Um, or actually, did I open the article? Oh, crap. Well, I just closed an article by accident. Hang on. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we'll get to it in a second, but there's another article that uh, where Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, was talking about the Halo Infinite delay, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so yeah, this this article doesn't really go back, go into that much. It's just kind of talking about the the backlash that the trailer or that the the gameplay campaign demo got or whatever. The interesting thing for me is that um, one, Microsoft stuck to their word, and Phil Spencer had said er, way earlier in the year that nothing would delay the Xbox Series X launch, not even Halo, and. They're sticking to their guns. Halo's been delayed, but the Xbox Series X, they say, is 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 confirmed to launch in November. So they don't have a date yet, but they ha they have said November. So, and I mean, again, ballsy. I appreciate it, and it's it's also interesting that now the Xbox's big launch title isn't even a game. It's Game Pass, <laughs> is their big launch title. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. I I don't know what the hell is gonna happen. Uh, I'm assuming they're waiting for Sony to announce a date, so they're probably gonna play fucking politics with it. The, um, I, they're doing the same thing with price Black too. Friday. <laughs> there, yeah, there's no Black Friday anymore. Um, I might just have the console shift to my house because oh, yeah, I'm probably just gonna order mine on Amazon. So so for you people that are probably listening from all over the place, so. We are at the epicenter of a hotspot for NEPA in Hazleton, and our cases are out of fucking control right now. I think we have, I think, 135 more today. Oh, so our cool. cases are just getting out of control, and, and, you know, with school coming in, I can already imagine where it's going to be at by November. So Well, thankfully, at least you know, our school we district is smart enough to not send the kids to school. They're doing all online for right now. Do it so. all that's at least one, I guess, bright side <laughs> to to the the sh the bullshit. But yep, yeah. So uh, we'll we'll see. I'm personally probably just gonna have a shift to my house. Um, I haven't decided. I I really want to get a Best Buy card. I don't know what they're doing right now with the pandemic. Uh, so I don't know. I I do plan on getting a shift to my house. Uh, I have to go through Amazon. Maybe I'll do that. That's probably it's what I'm just, gonna do. I was thinking about getting an Amazon Prime card, but I really don't know if it's worth it. I I, re I really really don't know. So I'm like, oh, it's debating options. Maybe maybe it could happen. Um, I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't know how it would work with the PlayStation card, but I think you could. I think you can buy the console directly from PlayStation and get it shipped to your house. But yeah, yeah, um, I know, right. But uh, to continue on with the Halo thing here, um, this one's by Nicole Carpenter again at Polygon. Xbox boss talks about the decision to delay Halo Infinite. Phil Spencer said all this in an Animal Crossing interview. <laughs> so, uh. Gary Whitta, friend of Kinda Funny, he's also a screenwriter, he screen wrote a bunch of different movies, TV, comics, video games, a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'd say the thing he's probably most known for is he's, he was a writer on uh, Star Wars Rogue One, a bunch of other stuff. He wrote the Book of Eli, a ton of other stuff, but he has, the, he has this Animal Crossing talk show called Animal Talking, which is fucking incredible. <laughs> And he just has all these guests on. So Xbox Chief Phil Spencer appeared on Gary Wood's Animal Talking talk show on Wednesday night following the announcement of Halo Infinite's delay. He spoke a bit about the decision to, to delay the game on the show, which he said was his call to make. 
Halo Infinite will no longer be releasing in November alongside Microsoft's next-gen console, the Xbox Series X. A new release date was not immediately given, only that it's now coming in 2021. Spencer said Microsoft and 343 Industries started talking about the decision late last week after going over certain options, like shipping parts of the game individually. Ultimately, however, Spencer said that that just wasn't the right fit for a game like Halo Infinite. A delay was the most fitting decision. <laughs> Ship it in pieces. I don't know how the hell that would go over. <laughs> I don't know. That'd yeah. be kind of like Final Fantasy, like, yeah, from the PS1, you'd buy the first thing and there'd be the second bundle that would come out. Because uh, I had the, well, that was back in the day where you flip the fucking case open, and there'd be four goddamn discs. Yeah. I remember that. Byard played them, but yeah, that I don't know if that would really work out for modern day. Back then, it made sense. Yeah, because no one knew what was happening. But now, ah, yeah, I think a delay is definitely reasonable. Okay, so I don't even really know where to start on the next story, but um, yeah, to finish off the Halo conversation, like again, like we said. Definitely big, like, big props to Microsoft for actually coming to the decision of, like, hey, like, this game isn't where it needs to be. This isn't, this doesn't live up to the, to the Halo name. So we, we have to do something. So, you know, I appreciate the, the balls on them to do it. Um, obviously the game is going to be better when it comes out because of it. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I mean. Not exactly right. We'll get to see what happens. It should be interesting. I, I just, I hope it's worth the wait for Halo fans. Like, I don't personally care about Halo. I, I have um, Xbox Game Pass on PC, and I've tried a bunch of different times to try to start playing the Halo campaigns and get into them. It's just not for me. I don't, I don't like the way the game feels, but that's also because I'm, I, I, you know, have been playing Call of Duty my whole life. So to me, Halo doesn't feel that great, and I can't get past that to actually play the game. And plus, like, I don't know. The lore just seems so fucking confusing. <laughs> but. I know. Yeah, it's it's just, I don't know. It's not really for me. I got my ass handed me in Halo many times back in the day. Um, but it was pretty cool. We had pizza parties. That was, that was totally dope. Um, but yeah, I was like, okay. It was pretty cool for the, the fun I had on it. I mean, buyers would show me a lot of the glitches that you can get out of the map and stuff with the Warthog, and you know that that was the whole thing back in the day. Uh, it was it was fun. It was fun during the MySpace days. Man, those were some fun times. But yeah, Halo. I, I think Halo Infinite should be good. I, I really hope it is because after this, I really don't know. Like, if this game fails, I don't know if Halo should go on. I heard Halo's going to come to PlayStation. I'm still not going to play it because I really just don't care. But um, I. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see Halo maybe in 2022, maybe if they're going to do something, but we'll see. Yeah, I kind of wonder, like, how far out of the launch window this is. Like, is are we talking, like, spring 2021, or are we talking, like, a whole year, like, holiday 2021? I feel like it's probably gonna be sp maybe late spring Yeah, probably, like... April or May, maybe. I don't think they're gonna go too far. They might just throw the fucking ray tracing in because oh, why not? You're already you're already baking the game. You might as well throw it in. You know, if not, people are gonna be like, "Well, where's the ray tracing? Where are those uh, rays? I need to trace them. Where are those rays? I don't need a suntan. I just need to see a good game. <laughs> Where right. are they at? So now this one that's basically still developing as we speak. Uh, Fortnite. So we'll start off here. Fortnite lowers V-Buck prices, calls out Apple and Google's exorbitant mobile payment fees. This one's from IGN by Jordan Alleman. Epic has confirmed so that... Like a... Oh, sorry, wow. go ahead. Is this, like a... is this like a content dispute? Like, they're, they're downloadable content or their data rates? Like, what, what is it? It's, about? okay, is so... It basically, Apple and Google charge... Um... 30% of any revenue made on a game on the App Store, Apple takes Apple and Google take 30% of that automatically. But it's only for games that do that. Like it's it's only certain in-app purchases that they, that they do that for. But the, yeah. Apple and Google say it's because they it's safer to do it through their store and so that people don't get scammed or whatever. But also like 
say like if you go to, on the Amazon app on your phone, you're not paying through the the Apple store. You're paying Amazon. You know what I mean? So like yeah, it's yeah. very basically they're trying to say it's like double standards basically the way that they're handling this and also that it's not fair like sure to fortnite like fortnite makes billions upon billions of dollars they don't really care if they get you know 30 percent chopped off but it's more of like a we understand that this doesn't affect us that much but if you're like an indie developer who makes his first mobile game and spends like two years working on it and then tries to sell it on the app store and for apple to take 30 percent of your two years worth of work you know what i mean it's shitty. So, uh, we've got this update right on the top. Epic has also confirmed that if you've spent real money within Fortnite in the last 30 days, uh, July 14th, 2020 to August 13th, 2020, you'll be given 20% off the purchase, but 20% of the purchase total in bonus V-Bucks. All active players will also be given the Shooting Star Pickaxe for free. Uh, Epic Games has permanently lowered the cost of Fortnite V-Bucks by 20% across all platforms, including adding a new direct payment option on mobile, calling out Apple and Google's exorbitant payment fees in the process. The Fortnite Mega Drop is explained in further detail in the FAQ from Epic. On PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Mac, and PC, V-Bucks and real money offers are automatically discounted by 20%, meaning 1,000 V-Bucks now costs $7.99 down from $9.99. Mobile is a little different where players can still buy using Apple or Google accounts at the higher price, but will now offer Epic direct payment when purchasing V-Bucks on mobile devices to save that 20%. Wow. So basically they're <laughs> at war with... Wow. Pretty That's... much. <laughs> so they're at war with their distributor. That's They're at war with Apple and Google, basically. Damn, that, that's, that's a war I would not want to be in, because you're talking about the two most powerful technological companies besides Microsoft. Unless Microsoft has a store. I'm sure they do, but... Well, the thing uh, is, is, like, as we get deeper into this story, it starts to unfold, and you can... You start to realize that this was, like, this was all planned from the... Like, they planned this perfect... Like, they, they didn't just add this in as just, like, a... Fuck it, we need more money. Like, you can tell that they did this... They did this because they knew that then Apple and Google would remove them from the App Store, which then opens them up to be able to sue Apple and Google for being a monopoly. So, like, this was all planned out from the beginning. But let's keep reading on. It's uh, very interesting, no yeah, doubt. <laughs> definitely. And, like, if there is one game developer that can actually afford to stand against Apple and Google, it's definitely Fortnite. <laughs> like, Epic Games and Fortnite. Because people... I think people... One thing that people don't realize is just well first of all just the money they make from fortnite alone is like just obscene amounts of money but on top of that they also have other games that they make they also have the epic game store on pc they also make unreal engine so they make dollars on like every sale of a game that uses unreal engine you know what i mean like they yep. just make obscene amounts of money left and right so if, the, if there's one developer that can actually afford to take a stand in court against Apple and Google. It's definitely epic. It's just, wow. At this point, they might as well be Arthur the Dutch. By God, Arthur. I well, God. by God, Arthur. I'm by going God. to war with Apple and Google. Wish me luck, <laughs> brother, because I ain't got a plan for this one. No, I ain't got a plan for this one, boy. I might need some gold bars, <laughs> Arthur. I might need some gold bars, brother. Epic explains that this allows the company to, quote, pass along the savings to the player, noting that the exorbitant 30% fee Apple and Google collect on every V-Buck payment as a reason for the alternative discounted payment method on mobile. In the future, Epic is open to altering the deal if Apple and Google lower their fees on payments. Epic also made it clear that this direct payment method is just as safe as, as other alternatives. Quote, in operating Fortnite, an open platform, and operating the Epic Game Store, Epic has processed over $1.6 billion of direct payments successfully and uses industry-trusted encryption and security measures to protect customer transactions. Wow, did you just say billions of dollars? I said billions, JP. Billions and billions and billions of dollars. John. So, uh, Bill let's see. Let's go to the next one. This one's from Ryan Gilliam over at Polygon. I apologize if I, if I mispronounce the name. Apple removes Fortnite from App Store. Google follows suit. 
On Thursday, Apple removed Fortnite from its App Store, with Google removing the game from its Google Play Store several hours later. This move you appears to be in response to <laughs> this move appears to be in response to Epic's recent decision to let players directly purchase V Bucks in Fortnite, circumventing Apple and Google's own payment processing and their thirty percent cut. Which what a fucking shit show! Wow, this is gonna get a lot of lawyers. It's <laughs> this is gonna be bad. I actually, uh, um, not recently, I guess, but I've actually noticed like a lot of different circumstances where like. If well, you pay for a subscription through Apple, it, it'll actually cost you more because the, whatever app it is will charge you more to make up for Apple's 30% cut. So like, for instance, if you buy, um, like, YouTube Premium or whatever, I think it's, like, 15 bucks a month or something like that normally. But if you pay for it through your iPhone, it's, like, 16 60 something a month because, <laughs> because they upcharge because of that 30%. Wow. But, uh, by God, Arthur, we're well, going to well, court. by God, we're going to court. Dude, I... Speaking of Arthur, there is a funny-ass thing on YouTube. It is the funniest ways to die in Red Dead. Oh, God. And I'll have to find them a send to you, because they're hilarious. Because all you hear is Arthur go... <laughs> like the one he gets ran off a cliff, he goes... By God, I'm feeling great today, Dutch. And he just gets run right off a cliff. I'm like, wow. By God, Arthur, I got a plan. Uh, let's what, see. What a shit show with that, though. That's crazy. And that, this, wow. So I like how this is happening in 2020. It's like, it's kind of like the digital age is fighting back to its, its the hand that feeds them. Yeah. So I don't really know where that's going to go. Uh, but Josh, uh, totally random. But if you get a, if you get some savage jerky, you will get a free koozie with every order. I don't have the money for it right now, but I don't know. I don't want to cut so it too pit. close, but I def I want to try to get some for the stream because that's one of the things on the on the wheel is to have to. Oh, eat. Trust me. oh, trust me. I'll I'll have them. I, I have I have two bags of Reaper and two bags of the ghost pepper i haven't touched them yet well i was but gonna say if I, you want like if you wanted to bring them and then i could just like i would pay value for whatever the jerky for them. Like, come on yeah that'd be funny yeah i could bring a i could bring a bag or something i should do carolina reaper because that's the most intense i think it'd be funny to see tyler or anthony eat it i think that would be absolutely hilarious be for the kids so I'm God, not a fat kid, kid right? <laughs> yeah. So we'll definitely do that. I missed my koozie order by two fucking days, by the way. Damn. I put my order in, and it was out the ship, and then they go, ah, oh, free koozie with every order. I'm like... Yeah. Honestly, dude, that, that kind of shit always happens to me, too. I know, right? It's just bad timing. But yeah, I'll definitely bring that bag, then. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, what was I gonna say? Guys, we're actually just... Tomorrow will be two weeks away from the extra life stream. I can't believe it's that close already. But uh, Fine, about a, about a week beforehand, we'll be announcing all of the the extra fun things we're doing just for the twenty four hour stream to to help us raise even more money for the kids, including which you guys got a little bit pre preview of it there. We we talked a little bit about it. We'll talk a little bit more about it uh, in the coming weeks. But uh, let's keep going on this, on about this Fortnite thing. Uh, the change in payment options appears to be a direct challenge to Apple's App Store review guidelines, which says that all in-app purchases must go through Apple's payment mechanisms. Um, uh, Epic CEO Tim Sweeney has also been very vocal about Apple's fees over the past few years, and then it shows a tweet from him from July 28th. It says, Apple has gone crazy. If colleges hold virtual classes through an iPhone app, Apple could demand 30% of the tuition. Truly, Apple has no right to take any percentage of any company's revenue just because they made the phone the people use to access the stuff. It's currently uh, unclear I, if or when Fortnite will return to Apple's App Store. Sorry, go ahead. Ooh, wow. That's... Ooh, damn. 30% to it. I, I don't think they're going to demand that, but... But I'm sure they're. I don't think they're going to, but it's also like, it. He's saying that they could, that they because of the way they're. Really possible. 
the way they that they're like fun. wording is set up like they could and the university would have no defense against that just because of they really the nature they really of the situation. wouldn't because, uh, i think they'd mainly have it by the digital distribution act they could technically charge i don't think they charge 30 i think they'd probably say at least 15 just because kids are going to learn and apples see apples usually like the people that give their stuff to people some kind hoping they don't do 30 percent but if they do by god arthur they got a plan so then there's like a bunch of updates <laughs> so update number one in a statement apple told polygon or removed fortnite from the app store for violating the company's guidelines saying that the change was done with the intent of violating those guidelines and it was quote not reviewed or approved by apple there's a full statement we're not going to read it because it's just it's a bunch of legal speak there's no point and then Epic sent Polygon an ex ex excerpt from its recently filed legal documents suing Apple over Fortnite's removal. So literally within like three hours of each other, Epic updated Fortnite to add this new direct payment method. Apple removed it from the App Store. And then within like maybe an hour or two after that, Epic already had papers filed to sue Apple. So this was, this was literally planned this way from the beginning. Then update number two... Fortnite has now been removed from the Google Play Store as well. In a statement provided to The Verge, Google detailed the removal, citing similar reasons to Apple. Wow. Did I hear the magic word? Did I hear plan? You got a plan. By God, Arthur, I got a plan. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, then we have Epic Games sues Apple Google after Fortnite pulled from the App Store. This one's from Nicole Carpenter at Polygon. Um, Fortnite developer Epic Games is suing Apple. Now I'm getting a phone call, so now we're just going to have to wait. I don't know who this is, but it doesn't seem important. It's a local number, but I have no idea who it is, so they can fuck off. At least it's a local number. They usually get calls from, like, Canada and California and and it's definitely not anybody else. It's just, uh... Yep. Alright. Um... Developer Epic Games suing Apple after this game was removed Thursday from the App Store. On Thursday morning, Epic implemented a new way to purchase V-Bucks. We already know about all this stuff. Um... Okay. Apple said the new payment system was not reviewed or, or approved by Apple. That it, and that it would return Fortnite to the App Store once the payment option is removed. Now Epic is looking to the court system for help in addressing what it calls Apple's monopolization of the industry. It is not asking for monetary damages. Instead, Epic wants the court to force Apple away from its anti-competitive restrictions. Throughout the complaint, Epic's lawyers reference Apple's 1984 Super Bowl ad, which was directed by Ridley Scott as a reference to George Orwell's 1984 and IBM's monopoly over the computer market. Fast forward wow. to 2020... Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. Fast forward to 2020. Yeah, this... No, sorry. 1984. Go oh my God, we're, we're, we're man. My God, Arthur, we're going back with this plan. No, yeah, it's pretty bad. That that's crazy that they're going that far back. Wow. Uh, fast forward to 2020, and Apple has become what it once rallied against: the behemoth seeking to control markets, block competition, and stifle innovation. Epic suit reads: Apple is bigger, more powerful, more entrenched, and more. Pernicious? I don't know if that's the way you write that, <laughs> to say that word. Then the monopolist of yesteryear. <laughs> At a market cap of nearly $2 trillion, Apple's size and reach far exceeds that of any te technology mon monopolist in history. Um, Epic's lawyer cited Apple's domination over the app distribution and payment, which they called unlawful. They called the 30% tax on sales oppressive. According to the complaint, Apple has refused to let go of its stranglehold on the iOS ecosystem, which it said hurts Epic, its competitors, and consumers. Um, the lawsuit suggests that Apple has violated the Sherman Act, which is an antitrust law that prohibits monopolizations. Uh, Epic is also calling on the California Cartwright Act and California's unfair competition law. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta. Update on Thursday night, Google pulled Fortnite from the Google Play Store. Epic's... <laughs> Subsequently filed a similar lawsuit against Google for his antitrust violations. Wow. This is a meticulous plan, Arthur. That, that's what I'm saying. is like As we keep going through these stories, you can see that like they had these suits written out and like studied and planned. Like I they wonder how long they've literally been planning this. 
Because, like, the fact that they filed these suits, like, an hour or two after they were pulled from each app store, like, this must have been a long time coming. I feel like they probably had this plan since before the pandemic happened. Probably. Their lawyers just jarred up the whole thing, and they're like, all right. Then they're probably like, all right, Arthur, we're going to keep this on the back door. Trust me, I've got a plan. <laughs> and then they'll be like, guys, fire it, quick! So, that's great. <laughs> doubling back to that, that Super Bowl commercial... Epic debuts 1984-inspired short in Fortnite, a direct attack on Apple. This one's by Austin Goslin at Polygon. <laughs> oh, shit. Epic premiered wow. a new short video in Fortnite on Thursday called 1980 Fortnite. The short, a parody of an Apple ad from 1984, was played at the big screen on the Party Royale Island and later released on YouTube. But it's the timing of the short that's most interesting. Much like the original Apple ad, the Fortnite short is about a dystopian society that is ruled by a monolithic totalitarian government that controls everything about its population, forcing them into total conformity. This leads to a population that's stripped of individuality, marching in sync, dressed identically, and all starring, staring transfixed at a giant screen where a man with an apple-shaped head reminds them of the importance of their conformity. <laughs> Today, we celebrate the anniversary of the platform unification directives. The giant talking head says, For years they have given us their songs, their labor, their dreams. In exchange, we have taken our tribute, our profits, our control. This power is ours, and ours alone. We shall prevail. Finally, we see a lone character in color, the Bright Bomber, one of Fortnite's most iconic skins. She runs into the room and hurls a giant hammer at the screen, cracking it and destroying the screen with a giant face. Wow, I... Wow. Damn, this is like a full-on assault. Oh my god. Oh my god. You can tell they had this plan for a while, especially with all the new stuff they added in. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, thank god Steve Jobs isn't alive, or else he'd probably roll in his fucking grave right now, because that's, uh, that's pretty unreal. That's, that's crazy when you have that much heat with a distributor, uh, you know, a business deal, you cop out, it's a lot of lawsuits. I mean, they had their tracks covered but it's crazy that like one of the first lines in their suit mentioned their the apple super bowl ad and then right at the same time they upload this clear parody of it in fortnite like it's wow. insane to me Four. how perfectly planned out this was and like i don't even like fortnite but like seeing what they're doing to try to make things better for other developers and make things better for the industry as a whole like, I gotta give it to them. Like, I literally don't give a shit about Fortnite, but, like, fucking good on Epic for st literally trying to stick it to the man. Like, Apple's a $2 trillion company. They do not need to be taking 30% of revenue from every single in-app purchase, everything sold on the App Store. Like, it's it's obscene. Yeah, like, I think 15%, maybe 20 would be good, but 30 is, like, that's a lot of money. So, I, it's just... It's crazy, man. But business, uh... This runs wild, man. That the almighty, almighty dollar. Yep. Almighty dollar always, always prevails, Arthur. Now, yeah, I, I just, wow. That's crazy knowing that they're at war. They were literally at war with two distributors that are the two biggest mega digital companies besides Microsoft. Wow. Even like, but like, at this point, I'm pretty sure Apple's bigger than Microsoft. Because I think Apple's the the first and only trillion dollar company, so Apple literally is worth more than Microsoft. I'm pretty sure. So it's like, kind of funny to Microsoft bail them out too. Excuse me. It's an, it's it's crazy. Yeah, but, yeah. So, yeah, Microsoft really bailed them out. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow, damn. But the last yeah. story, and then we can kind of give our own thoughts and and stuff is uh, again from Polygon this one's from Patricia Hernandez Epic's Fortnite fight against Apple and Google is bigger than greed Epic Games just wants more money is too simple of a narrative it's easy to roll your eyes at Epic Games' 1980 Fortnite ad which parodies a 1984 Apple commercial about the company's fight against the monopoly can a gaming company valued at 17.3 billion really act like an underdog sticking it to the man then again the alternative rooting for Apple doesn't seem much better Apple is the most valuable company in the world. Surely it can live with taking a smaller commission from products sold on its storefronts. Quote, everything about this sucks. Layman's gaming website Kotaku. It's a sentiment I've seen echoed on social media, where some folks post that pose it that in a slap fight between two tech giants, the only real winner is the corrupting tendrils of capitalism. After all, the issue comes down to money and making more of it. 
But that skeptical narrative also flattens what else is at stake in the legal battle between Epic Games and Apple. The language of the lawsuit is revealing, and an Epic says it doesn't want monetary compensation, monetary compensation from the proceedings. Nor is the nor is Epic seeking favorable treatment for itself, a single company. The document reads: Many folks worry that this tussle will just end with Apple easing up on Epic Games while ignoring everyone else. But Epic Games' lawsuit explicitly says the company doesn't want special treatment that it isn't afforded to others. Quote, instead, Epic is seeking injunctive relief to allow fair competition in these two key markets that directly affect hundreds of millions of consumers and tens of thousands, if not more, of third-party app developers. Epic's complaint against, against Google reads similarly, with Epic stating that it's not seeking favorable treatment for itself, but rather a more open environment for everyone. Obviously, winning this battle would mean that Epic Games makes more money, which would be, quote, favorable to them, but the implications of the lawsuit could be more far-reaching for the gaming industry at large, especially when it comes to smaller game developers. If Apple, or indeed any major storefront, took less than its usual 30% cut for apps and in store purchases, it could make a world of difference for indie developers. The percentage that Apple takes is pretty standard on digital storefronts like Steam or the Nintendo eShop, but mobile devices are more ubiquitous than dedicated gaming hardware, and seeing, seeing a notoriously stubborn company budge on something like this could help sway other storefronts to reconsider their commissions, too. Uh, one recent viral tweet by game developer Emma Mason. Uh, posits that if Storefront took a smaller revenue share, like the 12% that Epic Games takes on its own storefronts, that extra income would have allowed her studio Kitsune Games to develop a new title without crowdfunding. The replies to the tweet include other indies sh sharing similar opportunities that would have become possible with more equitable revenue sharing models across the gaming industry. Quote, the amount of extra stuff we could add to our games would be insane, wrote indie developer Elwin Verplogen. I have totally demolish that name i apologize uh on platforms like steam the more you sell the better you're rewarded the revenue share can go down to 20 percent arguably a smaller developer needs that extra money more than the blockbuster studio the stakes of a smaller fee are higher for the little guys which typically doesn't get influence get to influence what these numbers look like epic almost seems like it's taking up the mantle for them is this giving epic games too much credit possibly but the company does seem to be walking the walk. Beyond offering a better revenue-sharing model on its own storefront than other major players, Epic has also been making progressive strides that help smaller developers across the board. Earlier this year, the Battle Royale maker announced that anyone using its proprietary Unreal Engine would no longer have to pay royalties on the first million dollars in revenue, a move that only affects indies. This is on top of offering $100 million in grants to people using the Unreal Engine in novel ways, including the improvement of open-source tools that help the community at large. In practice, Epic appears to uphold the idea that a rising tide lifts all boats. A smaller revenue share might mean fewer profits for gatekeepers in the short term, but if, but if it empowers creators to make and do more, the long-term tale is better for everyone involved. Uh, to see a company like Epic Games not just pick a fight, but act righteous about it, wait, about what it stands for, seems wrong in a world where tech giants repeatedly fail us. Corporations don't get to act like they want what's best for anyone, not anymore. But when I look at the messaging surrounding Epic Games and its values, I don't entirely see a soul-sucking machine looking out for a number one. Instead of a completely depersonalized brand, Epic Games also exists as an extension of a specific ideal idiosyncratic personality, company founder and CEO Tim Sweeney. Uh, what kind of business plan is it to take your video game off two of the biggest platforms available for who knows how long? Why pick a fight that will cost you boatloads of money? Who takes on Apple and Google and thinks they can win? More than any big modern tech company I can think of, Epic Games seems like the personal vehicle of an optimist who believes in something bigger than himself, even if it's unrealistic and foolhardy. So, that's quite a scenario they got going on there. So, all in all, to to to, I know that was a lot of of articles that we read. So sorry for just, you know, reading for like 20 minutes straight. But so in, in layman's terms, or, or to simplify it, basically yesterday in Fortnite, uh, an update came out uh, on mobile that allowed you to buy V-Bucks and skins or whatever directly from Epic instead of through the App Store. And anything directly through Epic was 20% 20, 20 cheaper than buying it uh, through the App Store. Wow. Which, of course, directly violates Apple and Google's terms of service, so they eventually both responded and took Fortnite off of their respective app stores. And so Epic and Fortnite, well, 
I like to say Fortnite because it's I feel like most people don't even real like most people don't even realize that like oh Epic Games develops Fortnite, but whatever. So Epic Games files a lawsuit on Google and Apple saying, you know, basically they're monopolies, they're, you know, taking way too much money from from developers and from game makers and app makers and stuff and that it's, you know, they're worth billions upon trillions of dollars and they don't need to be taking all this money and that, you know, as Epic as a company, we don't want to be treated differently than anyone else. We want this to be like a universal change on these platforms to make it better for everyone and not just better for Epic. Oh, yeah. And then also at the same time, as part of their lawsuit, they talk about a Super Bowl ad from 1984 with Apple, which was Apple's Super Bowl ad was was pitching themselves as the underdogs and being like, hey, look, IBM has a, has a monopoly on PCs. But here's a small fledgling company called Apple coming around. And, you know, we're different than IBM. Like, we're di- you know, we're sticking it to the man. And so, you know, obviously 20, some 20, almost 30 years later. Now, Apple is the big monopoly. And for lack of a better term, Fortnite, but m- more than more than Fortnite, it's it's just game developers and anyone who's really selling any sort of app on the app store that isn't also another major company is, is now the, you know, what the ad stands for really like the, the Fortnite parody version. That's like, Hey, like fuck Apple. And I, I love the, fa- I love the fa- fact that in this parody video, the like dictator is basically like someone in like a Fortnite skin with like an Apple head. I'm like, I'm yeah. like that's perfect. But perfect. So, uh, as far as I can tell, like if if you still have Apple or if you still have Fortnite downloaded on your Android and iOS devices, you can still play it. I don't know if you can actually do any in-app purchases as, as of this time that I didn't see in any of those articles mention it. Um, I would assume, well, actually, I don't know, but, um. Yeah, so basically Epic is trying to get Apple and Google to cut back on their 30% revenue sharing thing to to not only help out themselves, but seemingly more importantly, help out smaller developers that need that extra money. And and like I said, from one of the articles I was reading, like there was a whole thread of indie developers saying like, oh, if we had like, say 15 or 20% more money, from this game that we made, we could have easily funded a brand new game off of it and not had to go on like Kickstarter or people saying that we could have added so much extra stuff to to our game and stuff like that. It's like, especially when you're looking at indie games, like it's a pretty like sad dystopian, like thing to see that like these people who are sometimes just one person doing this in their spare time, like, when they're not at work or something like putting in two, three, four, possibly more years of their life into a passion project. And then to have Apple come in and take almost half of their revenue from it. Like yeah, that I is, know. that is shitty. I know it is pretty shitty. It's definitely a statement for game developers. No doubts on that. I mean, it'd be pretty cool if it went through. It's just, man, you're taking on Google and Apple. It's, that I mean, it's basically like them in 1984 at the Super Bowl. It's kind of funny, actually. It's it's a, it's a real jab. I could see why they they threw shade at them in the way they did because it really is the same scenario. It's just with Apple being the uh, the people that are taking it and Google. I'm sure they'll have a Google uh, <laughs> a Google shot if I had to guess. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. I just like like I said as as we were reading through those stories like for me as someone who literally could not care yeah I couldn't care less about Fortnite I'm just not into battle royale games I understand everyone loves it yeah I never got into it either I never even like even the Call of Duty battle royales I can't get into and Call of Duty is like the one 
medium for battle royale that if i was to get into it i should be able to get into it and like i've been trying to play some some games of warzone here and there because like i want to get into it but i just after like two games i'm like eh, i'm i'm bored yeah but, it's just not, it gets boring as shit it really does really like, really does so fortnite as a game means almost nothing to me the only other thing i could say about it is i i love how how much of media it's transcended to be able to get like the crazy ass crossovers that they have like they have like right. Deadpool and Captain right. America and freaking Aquaman and Batman and shit and like all this different stuff in the game, which I think is so fucking cool. But crazy, right? Now they pulled it off, you know. It's definitely business at its core. I mean, they know how to do business. It's just now like, they're uh, they're competing against a beast. But a like, beast that they might not beat. I don't even know that. I mean, I don't know. Well, like clearly, this was like very thought out, like. And you can tell even by, like, by the way that, like, the opening of the suit is throwing that Super Bowl ad back in their face. And, like, they have all these, like, Sherman Antitrust Acts and all these, like, California, like, laws and acts that they're throwing in their face. That they're just like, hey, like, these all, Apple's practices violate all of these different laws. And, like, you as the court of law need to look at this and be like, hey, what the fuck is going on here? And so, like, I don't know that... I like see because Apple just has tr I mean they have trillions of dollars so like who knows where this suit actually goes but even just the idea of bringing attention to it I think is at least good enough like I think they really I really think Apple and Google do need to change their policies but even if they don't like bringing attention to this on a national scale because like let's be let's be honest no other game developer could do this and make the same headlines as the developers of Fortnite. you know what i mean like little timmy trying to go and download Fortnite on his like ipod or iphone or whatever now now that he can't like that's gonna that's gonna make national news <laughs> you know what i mean like it's the biggest game out there like it's the biggest game it makes shit tons of money it is has millions upon millions of monthly active players like yeah, it's huge. It is. It's a free to play game, right? Yeah. Isn't it? It's, yeah. Well, Battle Royale is that the mode that everyone plays. The single player people hate, but you also have to pay for it, so. But yeah, so, like, good on, good on Epic, man. Like, sure, you could look at it as, like, oh, they're just doing this for more money. But clearly the the wording in the, in the suits that says that they don't want special treatment just for Epic. They want this to be a unanimous change across the board in these app stores and across these storefronts. It definitely shows that, like, Epic just makes so much money from all of their different business endeavors that they don't need to give a shit about this extra, like, 15 to 20 percent. It's the smaller developers that do need to worry about stuff like that. I know, right? And I think it's, I think it's fucking awesome. Like, like I said, don't, I don't like Fortnite as a game, but Epic as sticking a, it yeah, sticking it to the man and Epic as a platform, like, or Epic using their platform, I should say. And even like one of the smartest things that they did, I, and I hate to keep rambling on about it, but one of the smartest things that they did other than just, you know, you know, is put something in Fortnite that directly references it. Yep, because then, because right then there a bunch shade. of other players that have no idea what's going on are gonna see that event and be like, "What the hell does this have to do with anything?" And then they're gonna look it up and they're gonna be like, "Oh shit!" So like they are tr getting as many eyes on this as possible, which is so fucking smart. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. I'm assuming they're gonna go to court. I'm assuming they will go to court because uh, I mean, unless, well, I mean, I don't see it happening, but unless Apple and Google just decide to change their thing without going to court, which I don't see happening. But yeah, yep. I assume this will go to court at some point. It'll definitely yeah, be interesting. Exactly. Imagine being a juror for that case. Wow, I remember reading about this on the internet. <laughs> so, I, 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 my grandson plays this Fortnite game. <laughs> my grandson plays that Fortnite game. <laughs> Could you imagine if that like influences the judge's decision? It's like, well. I'm gonna have to give Apple the loss here because uh, my son or my my grandson will be pissed if he can't play Fortnite. 
I have a bias. Why? Because my son likes playing Fortnite. I'll let him down. <laughs> I ain't gonna let him down. I can't let him down. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna follow this uh this news story, and we'll we'll definitely update as more things happen. Once this eventually, I don't see much happening between now and whenever they end up going to court. Which I mean, who knows when that'll be because of the pandemic. Yeah, but, I know, right? Probably gonna be a year, I'd say. But it's there. It's kind of crazy to think that, like, Epic doesn't seem like they're backing down. So unless Apple and Google changes anything, like, you're not going to be able to download Fortnite on mobile at all for a year, maybe more. That's crazy. Right. But yeah, we're what? definitely going to follow this story as it as it goes on. And, and like I said, I, I love it to the, that they're sticking it to the man. Like, I don't necessarily like hate Apple or Google but in this particular situation they definitely are the bad guys yep that, that shade though definitely and I mean like so it's, it's stupid to say because I have an iPhone and like even if I didn't have an iPhone I'd be using an Android so like I don't know <laughs> I have to get my case. It's coming in, but yeah. <laughs> I just got it. But yeah, I got me an iPhone 11. But, uh... And but, GP, you know, anything Apple, else you have to say? Uh, it's definitely going to be interesting, because, I mean, Apple's literally, like, two to three trillion dollars worth. And yeah, it's going to be interesting, really like, money. to see if they, like, invest, like, millions upon billions of dollars just to get, like, the world's best lawyers into this, or, like, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But, like I said, yeah. guys, we're going to be following this story as it, as it goes on, and we'll definitely be bringing you updates as, as things happen. Like I said, there probably won't be any massive update until they actually end up going to court, whenever that is, yeah, but... Probably a year, I'd say, at least. Yeah, just who no, knows with the pandemic, pandemic stuff. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. No doubts about that. Definitely. Well, I, got Definitely. Our, I got a plan. <laughs> I just imagine, like, that's that was <laughs> that was like the higher ups at Epic when they walked in to work, whatever day that was, yesterday or whatever. But they were just like, by God, Arthur, we got a plan for today, all right? We're going to sue Apple and Google. And everybody in the meeting was probably like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you heard us right. We're going to sue Apple and Google today. Just you wait before we leave. Well, they were in a Zoom oh. meeting, probably, but before we before we're done working for today, we're gonna have suits out for Apple and Google. And there was probably some intern there that was probably just like, uh, "Excuse me." Exactly right. Should be interesting to see what happens. Ugh. But guys, that being said, this has been yet another episode of Pizza and Pixels, the show where JP and I order a pizza and talk about video games until that pizza shows up. It goes live every Saturday on YouTube.com slash Hexphenom or on podcast services around the globe, places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, which is, and Google Play, which is, <laughs> again, ironic, considering that, considering the discussion, but, uh, all right. <laughs> but with that being said, guys, another one bites the crust.